I'm far from a professional gamer, but I am happy to say that I do get my first place finishes once in a while on BF4, even if they are on non-competitive public servers. But anyway, recently I've started to notice a lot of coverage around professional gaming, otherwise known as eSports. I know this has been around for a few years, but I think it's really starting to get more mainstream and really starting to take off. In fact, global eSports revenue generates over $600 million a year of direct revenue from things like competition, sponsorships, online ads, paid viewership, merchandise, licensing tickets, and game sales, and is predicted to grow at a whopping 30% over each of the next five years. It's a great time to be a competitive gamer. MOBA, or Multiplayer Online Battle Arena, seems to be the game style of choice for serious competitive play. One of the more popular titles, the League of Legends, have actually had their championships average almost double the number of viewers as the NBA Finals over the past two years. Battle Arena style games aren't really my thing, but this is an amazing fact to me. Although in terms of revenue, the NBA is still a much bigger and more profitable sport, at least for now. Dota 2 is another example of a huge esports title, and the payouts in the Dota Championships actually exceed that of the Masters Tournament. Being more of a FPS fan myself, the only major game that has played professionally, as far as I can tell, is Counter-Strike, which boggles my mind. The graphics are horrendous on this game, and I really can't figure out why it's so popular. The gameplay just seems so rigid and flat. TBS also just announced that they will be airing competitive gameplay broadcasts of Counter-Strike on Friday nights starting in 2016. While ESPN has done some esports coverage in the past, this was a pretty major announcement, and it was faced with some criticism. To me, the level of skill and practice it takes to master these games go well into the thousands of hours, really no different than any other world-class profession has to put in their activity. So I don't really know what all the hate is about. Just as it takes thousands of hours to master the violin, become a grandmaster at chess, win a golf tournament or a football game or any other sporting event, so too is mastering strategy, tactics, and gameplay in Dota. Some gaming leagues even drug test for things like Adderall, and a few colleges have even given out scholarships to eSport athletes. It's really crazy. Now, DraftKings, the gigantic online fantasy sports site, has even announced that beginning next month they will begin to offer fantasy team management in eSports. This makes me really wonder about the future of gaming in general. With the PlayStation VR and Oculus Rift finally about to hit the market, and with developers getting behind it to support it, could we see people eventually competing virtually in activities that are done in real life? That would be crazy, but probably not. One great thing about the explosion of esports is that companies that make PC parts and gaming accessories really are starting to focus on high-end products because they're now world-class professionals to serve and a lot of money behind it as well. And that's really great for all of us. Gaming mice and keyboards, headsets and awesome monitors, just to give a few examples of the types of products that we all get to enjoy. I look forward to reviewing some more of these products in the near future to see if they can actually improve our gameplay abilities and make us better gamers. If anything, if they make playing video games a more fun and immersive experience, then it's definitely something worth looking into. But that's all I have for this week. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you could take a quick second to give a thumbs up, that would be awesome. But otherwise, have a nice weekend.